so your streaming algorithm thinks you'll like this action film. But here's something it doesn't know. Your warriors are about to play. Is there anybody out there that can beat them? But they should <laughs> Silly this algorithm. This is the house where Tyler Sash lived. And where he died eight months ago. Today, Barney Sash still finds herself immersed in the memories of her son and the items he left behind. I had this little outfit that was his when he was a baby. I gave it to him and I said this, you know, you saved this for your little boy. He couldn't wait to have kids. He said, but when my kids get older, he said, they're not going to play football. As a rookie with the New York Giants, Sash was a backup safety who excelled on special teams. He won a Super Bowl in his first season. Three years later, he was dead at age 27. Are we ready? Is it shooting? <laughs> Tyler was the most loving, caring, funny, goofy person I had ever met. I'm finally taking the <laughs> Heather Dickinson met Sash when they were seven. They dated in college, broke up, then got back together and planned to get married. He would come to my work and he would bring me an energy drink or snacks. If he thought I had a bad day, he would deliver me flowers. Sash was born in Oskaloosa, Iowa, where he grew up with a football in his hands and idolized the Iowa Hawkeyes. What a run by number 33, Tyler Sash! In high school, he was all state in football and basketball. Sash with a pretty open nice. three point shot, shot and he puts it in. And had scholarship offers in both sports. Sash made a fateful decision to give up basketball and play football and went to Iowa. As an all Big Ten strong safety, he was known for his ferocious hits. He also had surgery on both shoulders and began taking pain medication. In 2011, the Giants drafted Sash in the sixth round. Near the end of his first season, Sash suffered his fourth documented concussion during the NFC Championship game. Sash played in the Giants' win over the Patriots. He returned to Oskaloosa, a Super Bowl champion and a hometown hero. You're the best. Thank you. But in August 2013, about to begin his third season, he suffered his fifth concussion. Two days later, Sash was cut from the team. He moved back home and again started dating Dickinson, who now had a young daughter. But she says the man she knew since second grade was beginning to change. Sometimes he was sad and he couldn't tell me why. Sometimes he was angry. He would lose his cell phone, his wallet, his keys. Where's my keys? Where's this? Where's that? And, you know, he was kind of all over the map. He was always researching concussions, and I think that's because he was scared. It was very difficult. He was just different. He was just a different person. Sass's struggles intensified. Eight months after he left the NFL, he was arrested for public intoxication after Oskaloosa police tried stopping him on his motor scooter. Sass led them on a chase and then dumped the scooter and took off running. Police had to use a taser to stop him. <laughs> Still, Sash had his good days, many of them spent with Dickinson and her daughter, Halen. She still asks about him every day, talks about him. Uh, that's what makes it really hard. Sash continued taking pain medication for his damaged shoulders. He always used to tell me he was going to die young because he said he had a body of an 80-year-old. Then came Labor Day weekend last September. He was really disoriented and confused. Um, he would tell the same story every 10 minutes. 
On Sunday afternoon, Barney Sash took this photo of Tyler napping with his nephew. On Monday night, she went to Tyler's house. He was laying on the couch, and I just thought he was sleeping. I came over the next day, and as soon as I opened the door, I knew he was gone. And I know he had to have been gone Sunday night because of the condition of his body. The medical examiner said Sash died from an accidental overdose after mixing two powerful pain medications, methadone and hydrocodone. His parents donated his brain to Boston University to be tested for CTE, a brain disease triggered by repeated blows to the head and associated with mood swings, depression, and memory loss. These images of his brain show that Sash not only had CTE, it was nearly as bad as Junior Seau's, and Seau played 20 years in the NFL. I love you, too. How are you getting through this? Day by day. Halen. You know, she really keeps me going. Anything that comes up, you know, I always think, oh, I wish I could tell Tyler this. Everything reminds me of him. Songs, Halen. Everything. I asked the Lord if my son hadn't have played football, would he still have died on that day? I love football. I'm not trying to ruin football for anyone. It's so much a part of the culture of America. My son went the football route. He could have played basketball. It wouldn't have cost him his life. <laughs> <laughs> 